Now, the Labour's biggest donors, Unite, have voted to maintain its historic links with the Labour Party. But the trade union's boss says the debate at its conference should be read as a warning to Sir Keir Starmer. So far this year, they've handed over more than a million pounds. Ask the General Secretary, Sharon Graham, why the debate about funding and its vote had even happened. Well, I think what it says, and the fact that this question has been raised, is that workers are not happy with some of the things that Labour are doing. And I do think that it should be seen as a shot across Labour's bows. The important thing for the conference is that what they want is they want the workers' voice to be heard. We have a party that sticks up for business. It's called the Conservative Party. What we want is Labour to be Labour and to make sure that they are fighting for workers. And these members here, these delegates here aren't seeing that. Give me an example of the kind of thing that you either hear from Labour or don't hear from Labour that makes you think not good enough. Well, I suppose, you know, ranging from things like not adopting the PRB on public services. Just to be clear, that's the pay review body. And remember, these are people that went out in the pandemic that risked their lives in the pandemic. Um, And to say that 6%, that they're not worth 6%, um, I think is an outrage and our members think that's an outrage but you've also got things like Mm. our steel industry that's on the basis of collapse just so that people know what we're talking about on the pay review body it was for teachers we understand the recommendation is for six and a half percent and rachel reeves the shadow chancellor said yesterday she hadn't seen the recommendations she wasn't going to comment on it but she wouldn't commit to Mm. to uh saying yes we sign up to whatever they recommend and that's what you're saying is not good enough Whether it's the pay review body and not committing or whether it's the fact that when we're on dispute in the health service and again not committing or whether it's the fact when there's striking workers making comment about striking workers and MPs on picket lines, there's a feeling that Labour are not coming out fully supporting workers. Um, And for me and for them winning the next election, if they want to win the next election, then people have to feel they've got something to vote for. They've got to feel that different choices are being made. What Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves says that she's doing is that Mm. she's been very clear that Labour's fiscal fiscal rules are absolutely non-negotiable. Now, she has a job in in order to persuade the electorate that Labour is not going to be profligate, is going to be sensible with the money, doesn't she? Well, I think it comes down to choices, doesn't it? I mean, we are a two and a half trillion pound economy. And so it depends on what choices you make. So an example that I've given to Uh, Keir and to Rachel, is that when you look at energy companies making a £170 billion profit and you've got a black hole of £30 and you've got other things that need to be filled like the NHS pay, why are we not choosing to look at those huge profits and use some of that money to make different choices? Um, And so whether it's that or the renationalisation of energy, which we have done a very detailed paper on, it would cost £90 billion on book price, What is the problem about making those types of choices instead of making choices that's going to plummet this country into austerity mark two? The argument on pay from some is that, look, they must not do anything that would be inflationary or be seen to be inflationary. But to be honest, without, try, you know, just trying to sort of, uh, you know, put this in a straight way, that is total toffee. Um, because actually, the real driver of the inflation at the moment isn't paid. The pay rises are way too low for that to be the case. It's actually rampant profiteering. The companies in the FTSE 350, their profit margin has gone up by 89% from 2019 to this year. Their margin of profit. That is what's driving inflation. Um, And so, therefore, why is that not being tackled? Why are they saying to the country, take a national pay cut, while they're allowing these ridiculous amounts of profits in a very small number of people's hands? Deal with that and they may start dealing with inflation. There is another issue Labour's being pushed about at the moment, which is uh, the decisions on various candidates and members who are coming under investigation. It's led to the Labour MP John Cruddus uh, to say that the party's fallen under the control of a right-wing illiberal faction embarking on a witch hunt. Do you agree with him? What I'm interested in is workers and what's happening to my members. And what I do think is that if you eradicate every worker's voice out of the Labour Party, then you end up with policies that workers do not want. Um, And so for me, it's about the issues, not individuals. If people are being taken out because they support the renationalisation of energy or they support procurement into UK steel, then what you end up with a party that isn't going to be representative of workers. And that's why I think so many people in the trade union movement are questioning the direction. Do you think that's why they've been taken out? Well, I I definitely think there is a link between the types of issues that some of these MPs are supporting 
and then been removed. Sharon Graham of Unite.